Hey guy, welcome back to the present. Unless, of course, you're watching this in the future, in which case, welcome to the past. So Christmas is in 329 days. What better time to make a video about it? I'm sorry, I racked my brain trying to come up with a different topic for this. I saw a lot of you guys asking me to make a video about the Hype House show on Netflix, so I turned it on and then blacked out after about four seconds and woke up in my bathtub covered in sweat. I thought about doing one about Elmo's beef with that rock, but that would have been like a minute long. I thought about coming on here and admitting that I don't care what clothes the green M&M is wearing, I still want to have sex with it. But then I thought about it some more and I realized that a lot of people had to reschedule Christmas activities this year because there was this mysterious virus going around. I don't know if you've heard of it. So if you're anything like me, you had to do all that stuff in the middle of January, sort of a, a Christmas 2.0, if you will. So think of that as what this video is A Second Chance at Christmas, which I would like to copyright because that's a great title for a Hallmark movie. Never mind, I just googled it. Uh, apparently there's like four of those. <laughs> anyway, the movies I'm going to be talking about today are called No Sleep Till Christmas and Holly's Holiday. The two things these films have in common is that the plots are ridiculous and they're also not really Christmas movies in spite of how they're marketed. They just take place in December. But I digress. Let's start with No Sleep Till Christmas. This movie made me so angry that by the end, Amanda and I were practically screaming at our television. Without spoiling too much, because I want you to discover the madness as I did, one of the main characters gets completely fucked over despite doing nothing wrong, and then the movie ends. And then to make it even worse, the reviews are mostly positive. People love it. This person watched it three times. This person liked it uh, but then watched it again and didn't like it, which is kind of a weird way to judge a movie, but go off, sis. Another thing real quick, uh, when we first started watching this, I saw in the opening credits that two people had the same last name, so I assumed, oh, that must be her brother. And I continued to think that they were siblings until a little too far into the movie. They're married, so. Probably not brother and sister. Hey, speaking of getting married, this movie is about Lizzie, whose wedding is coming up in about six weeks, which means it's time to start planning. Look, I'm no wedding expert. I've only been married once, but that is too late to start planning. Oh shit, babe, our wedding's tomorrow. Should we start inviting people? And even though Lizzie is an expert event planner. We're supposed to be one of Chicago's leading event planning companies. I know. She has no ideas for the wedding and she is so stressed out about it, she can't sleep. She's tried everything, reading books, throwing books on the ground, counting sheep. 1,000 sheep. But even after this hilarious insomnia montage, nothing's working. It's important to point out, her fiance Josh is extremely loving and supportive. He stays up with her, he takes her to a sleep clinic, he sends her flowers at work. Really, he's an all around great guy who's got his shit together and loves Lizzie, which is why it's confusing when the movie seemingly introduces another love interest. Unlike Josh, Billy is a lazy, unambitious alcoholic who is currently burning a turkey, stepping on a pie, and getting dumped. I don't think this is working. Oh. This guy sucks. Sure wouldn't make any sense if the main character ended up choosing him over Josh. I wonder if she will. Side note, have you ever noticed how often in movies someone burns a turkey on Thanksgiving? No offense to anyone who's done that before, but to me, this seems practically impossible unless you accidentally set the oven to like 900 degrees. It takes so long to cook one that usually by the time it's halfway done, I'm finished with all the other sides. Everyone is starving and now pretty much only waiting on the turkey, so we're essentially huddled around the oven hoping if we stare at it hard enough, the top will turn brown. How do people burn turkeys. I don't get it. Anyway, we learn that this guy can't sleep either, so I guess that similarity will eventually become the cornerstone of their relationship. Yeah, man, you just need to learn how to sleep. If I don't get any sleep, it's gonna ruin everything. Ah! Not even super mega baseball can knock this guy out. So he goes for a run while she goes for a drive, which is an unbelievably dangerous thing to do while sleep deprived, especially when the goal is to fall asleep. I, made this up <laughs> I mean, that seemed inevitable. Hey, wait a minute. That's not Billy. Unfortunately, they both survived the accident, so she had to take him to the hospital where they bicker in the parking lot before <gasps> falling asleep. Did I just sleep? I can't believe I actually slept. This is life changing. Now she has ideas for the wedding and he's able to dodge this glass. What the? But sure enough, nighttime rolls around and they can't fall asleep. They need each other. How romantic? isn't the right word, uh, bizarre. 
was going to say bizarre. So she meets back up with him, and this is where the movie starts abusing the hell out of the slept-together joke. In the car, the night we... Slept together? But not like that! So he becomes something of a sleep prostitute for her, in that she pays him money to, you know... Will you please try to sleep with me again? But not like that! And even if it works now, what happens after you're married? Are you just gonna keep sleeping with this other guy? No, sir, it's not like that! So every night she sneaks out, meets up with the guy she hit with her car, so they can sleep in the same hotel bed together. That's right! In addition to paying him money, she's also spending hundreds of dollars a night on a hotel room. In typical rom-com fashion, you see them act progressively flirtier with each other, only in this movie it's weird as fuck because she's literally engaged and we're supposed to be rooting for this? How about figure something else out? Are you sure this isn't getting out of hand? What are you talking about? We're just sleeping together. Oh my god. No. <laughs> it's not like that. Then there's the boner scene. Ah! And this one. Can you sit on Uncle Billy's lap? Please don't do that. Please don't sit on his lap for several minutes. You might be wondering where her fiance is in all of this. At least she told him about it, right? No, it's a secret. He's just working at the hospital, saving up money for their wedding. Sometimes he works overnight, which is great for Lizzie because she doesn't have to come up with a lot. And you can see how this movie doesn't really work as a typical rom-com because as they continue to go through the motions, I'm just wincing the whole time. I'm waiting for, at the very least, Josh to fuck up in some major way that warrants this monumental backstabbing. But as far as I can tell, the only flaw he has is that his mom is kind of overbearing. So I don't know, talk about it. Also, a lot of it is her fault. She overslept one day and ended up in jail. She's distracted because she's thinking about Billy. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. This woman is a villain. Why is she the main character? Another example, while her trusting fiance sits at home working on their wedding playlist, she goes out to her bachelorette party and decides, hey, we're all drunk. Let's go to Billy's bar. Oh. Are they gonna do a romantic karaoke duet now? Yes. Bells were ringing out. Of course they are. And I've built my dreams around you. They're falling in love. Just fucking tell Josh already so you can quit wasting his time. Oh, you're jealous that Billy's back with his ex now? You don't get to be. As the saying goes, you can't have your cake and cheat on your fiance. So, who's responsible for this new Billy then? you meet someone? Or? He's sleeping with someone, but he's not seeing her. Okay. Well, it sounds really bad when you put it like that. I feel much better about sleeping with you now that you're seeing somebody else. But not like that. As you can imagine, when Josh finally finds out, he is pissed. Billy makes me sleep. What? But he's so willing to understand what's going on that he offers to bring them to a sleep clinic to prove that they can fall asleep next to each other and they're not actually just making sweet, sweet hotel love every night. Lazy slob. I know. I know. I'm sorry for all of this. Yeah, definitely apologize to him, not the guy you're marrying in four days. Turn the lights, turn the lights down low. I can feel you breathe so slow. I think that should prove that you're not fucking. Just sing flirtily to each other while he watches from the other room. Well, they're asleep. Merry Christmas. Well, I guess it is a Christmas movie. He even got her a Christmas gift. A pillow with a photo of them. Josh is gonna love having that right on the bed. Oh boy. Everyone's in town for the wedding. That's a whole lot of people whose time would have been severely wasted were things to take an unexpected turn. Honor and protect him as long as you both shall live. Lizzie. Oh, okay, now she can fall asleep in front of her fiance. As long as it's at her wedding while standing up. What do you mean you haven't been sleeping well? I thought you've been sleeping fine. Josh. Please, not now. Not now, Josh. We wouldn't want you to make a scene, Josh. I guess the honest answer is no. I hate you so much. I really wish I'd left you in jail. That's more like it. So she goes out and steals the just married car and uses it to try to find Billy, who's now aimlessly jogging through Chicago. <laughs> Oh, a happy ending. No. I'm so horrible. You know, maybe if he cheated on her or lied to her over and over again, 
or, you know, did the things that she did to him, then maybe we wouldn't be so resentful towards the two main characters. I don't know. Just a thought. Doesn't matter. I'm clearly taking this too seriously. As a wise woman once said, it only a movie. <gasps> he said it. He said the thing. I don't remember that from the last video. Up next is another Mar Vista classic, Holly's Holiday. Believe it or not, the most uncomfortable part of this movie is not even that it's about mannequins coming to life and getting humans to fall in love with them, uh, but rather this weird incel behavior that's both encouraged and rewarded by one of the male leads, but I'm getting ahead of myself. This is the first line of the movie, and I think it sets the tone for everything we're about to see. There's only a few more weeks till Christmas, and there's still no snow. Sad. Sad. Always have your characters say the emotion they're feeling. That's effective dialogue. Much like in the last movie, a large portion of the plot is based around the main characters having to do something that should have been taken care of months ago. Holly's a graphic designer, and she and her team have to work up until Christmas Eve to finish an ad campaign that's supposed to go live on Christmas. I will not stand for this plot device. First of all, that design would have been done in like September. Second of all, why is the ad campaign starting on Christmas? Is that when everyone does their holiday shopping? The day they're supposed to already have the gift? Shut up, Hollywood. You don't know shit about the real world. I guess I shouldn't complain. I mean, I, I kind of have the perfect life. The only thing I don't have is... Tim. Everyone in this movie is so horny for mannequins. Have you ever looked at a mannequin and thought, oh, if only I could date you. Mm, the things I would do to that hunk of plastic. Come to Oom with me tonight and you'll see a whole room full of walking, talking mannequins. <sighs> Great. If you're looking to meet him, tonight's your chance. Don't worry, you'll meet guys like this tonight at Club Oom. Oom? What's Oom? New York's hottest club is Oom. So Holly and her coworker Milo are working on this ad campaign and he's really pushing for something different from the norm. Showing love in all Some the traditional ways. Unexpected way. places. All right. The love that I know, it, it's, it's flawed. Instead of two people kissing in front of a Christmas tree, what if they were screaming at each other at a macaroni grill? That's real love, Holly. That's what sells diamonds. And like, I'm all for out of the box thinking, but no. Just take a picture of a ring and go home. We're selling them these unattainable, unrealistic lies. Yeah. That's what a marketing department does. Really, this dialogue is just here to plant the seeds that while you're out there chasing perfection, there's a perfectly good guy standing right here. And I think that if you look hard enough that that you can find the sweetness and, and, and the beauty. Sure, maybe my body has a few too many orifices for your liking, but that's not always a bad thing. Uh, hey, you look really great. Thanks. Later, when he surprises her at the club, this is how he announces his presence. What? And the rest of the time when they interact, it's so awkward. <laughs> Say boo! <laughs> Weirdly pivotal scene in the movie, by the way. You'll see why later. Then this happens when they walk home. Um. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um. Yeah. I should I, go. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, uh, excuse me. Like, do I go around? Uh, I, yeah, no, I should. Uh, uh, um, I wish I could do that to you. What? Nothing. The next day, she trips over some carolers, falls on her face, and wakes up to a real-life Prince Charming. And just like the season four runner-up of American Idol, his name is Bo. I'm Bo. And he's the perfect guy. Handsome. Charitable, it causes scenes in restaurants, tall. He even has an awesome apartment. If you're gay, you can just tell me. It's fine. We can be friends. I'm not gay. And I'd rather not just be friends. Could not have said that in a creepier way. Would you look at that? Our lips fit perfectly together. Seems like you're missing a lot of red flags here, Holly. Maybe the guy who only wears V-necks isn't as bad as I thought. Like, come on, is he trying to look like Shaggy? So Milo is clearly being set up as the guy who's really the one for her. He may not have perfect face, but they're still meant for each other. She just, you know, hasn't figured it out yet. You know what, don't worry about it. You probably wouldn't have liked the art show that much anyway. Actually, I'm not sure if you know what I like. 
I think I know what you like. Uh, yeah, I think I know you better than you know you, Holly. We've been working together for a couple months now, and you've only been you your entire life. She just seems pretty wrapped up in a guy that she just met. She's not texting me back in a timely fashion. Well, maybe I'm just a little too complicated for you. Is he right about Bo having some underlying baggage? Yeah. But that's just because he's a mannequin come to life. Lucky guess, Milo. You're blind to the fact that something better, dare I say, perfect. You know, it's it, it could be standing right in front of you. Seems like any woman who doesn't want to date this guy is really missing out. What? Can I have a bagel? Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, Bo's cracks start to show, and not the one crack I'd actually like to see. He's a little too neat, and he keeps giving toasts for some reason, and he brought his parents to her house without telling her, and he dresses like Jake from State Farm. He even actively sabotages her career by canceling a photo shoot last minute. Really, he doesn't have any redeeming qualities other than being conventionally attractive? It's kind of weird that she even puts up with his strange bullshit for so long, but I guess that's the point? That we overrate hotness? as a society where we live. Hands, They're freezing. Let me warm them up. Now, you may remember earlier when I said that mannequins come to life, I did mean to use the plural version of that word because there's another one. Yep, Bo's ex-girlfriend gets into the mix and she's crazy. She knocked over a Christmas tree on top of that poor woman. <laughs> This is a disaster. At least Holly still has Milo to psychoanalyze her. The real you is so much more interesting than you think. You're just so wrapped up in what everybody else thinks you don't notice. He gets to come out of this situation as the hero in kind of a hilarious way. Do you think you can make something work? I always do, don't I? He's like, don't worry. I know the two mannequins screwed up the shoot, but... I'll pull something together, I'll fix it, and then Holly and Dina are blown away by what he's able to accomplish. He sent over mock-ups from the shoot. Oh, check that out. Oh, that Milo is a miracle worker. Wow. He photoshopped the name of the diamond company on top of the picture? That must have taken him... Not that long, probably. Which we know it didn't because only like 20 minutes has passed. I'm amazing, actually. So Holly goes ahead and breaks things off with the human sex doll. Do you know how many times I've stubbed my toe on my couch since you moved it? Now Milo has a chance. Go kiss her, Milo. Come on. I like to kiss. Milo! Again? I kissed you in your sleep. Where am I? In the hospital. You fell on your way to work a couple days ago and you whacked your head on the sidewalk. A couple days ago? Wait, what? So none of that actually happened? Yeah. I would just like to point out that she goes into a coma here. 20 minutes into the movie. Then a bunch of dream bullshit happens and she wakes up 56 minutes later. That's basically the whole movie. Side note, is it like a rule that if you get knocked unconscious, you have to get knocked unconscious again in whatever dream you're having in order to be sent back? It's a good thing she's so clumsy, otherwise she might have been stuck in there forever. You are more than welcome to stay again tonight, Mr. Maddox. Mr. Maddox? Yes, dear. You stayed with me? Yes, of course I did, sweetheart. All right. I told them that we were married so they would let me stay. Oh, while she was sleeping, he got to role play as her husband. Is that not weird? Yeah. Right, but you ready for this, guys? You ready for the big reveal? They have worked the entire movie towards coming up with the photo for this ad campaign. And finally, after deleting what they did while she was asleep, Holly finds the perfect one. What? What picture is this? Oh, uh, it's her hands, it's us. The accidental photo from earlier that he made his desktop background. So let me get this straight. They're just co-workers. They've known each other for a couple months. They're not boyfriend and girlfriend. They don't date. He accidentally took a photo of them touching hands. She found out that he made that his desktop background and she's not like, that's kind of creepy. Instead, she just makes out with his forehead. <laughs> Whatever, that's not even the best part. Look what she does to it.
<laughs> Look at the fucking ring. It looks so bad. And then the movie just kind of ends. There are zero more words spoken. I don't know what they'd even be saying here. And that's Brandy and that's Bo. They're my friends from my dream. And Bo came to life and fell in love with me, but I broke up with them to be with you. I guess they're back together now. Hey, where are you going? The end. I'd like to point out that the only reason we watched this movie was because we had watched the trailer. But if you've seen the trailer, then you've seen the movie. Because they basically spoil everything that happens. Even the stupid ring. So that's what I've been up to. Just watching Christmas movies. Oh my god, tomorrow is February. Hey, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Bad news, guy. I relapsed. I'm playing RuneScape again. If you've ever played RuneScape before, you know that a lot of the time you don't really have to pay attention. So I like throwing something on my second monitor that I can also devote half my attention to, like a show I've already seen. If only The Office was still on Netflix. Or is it? Just by turning on ExpressVPN and switching my virtual location to Canada, I can trick the internet into thinking that that's where I am. And now I'm watching the show like it's 2015 again. And life is good. But it's also great for protecting the information that you're constantly transmitting online. When you're connected to ExpressVPN, every single piece of data that goes in and out of your devices goes through a secure encrypted tunnel. So no one can see it. Not the government, not your internet service provider, not even me and I'm extremely nosy. ExpressVPN also masks your IP address, which can prevent a DDoS attack in an online game. I want to lose fair and square, not because some bozo figured out my IP address and launched an attack to slow down my internet so bad that I got disconnected. And on that note, while other VPNs I've used have completely destroyed my internet connection, I've never had that problem with ExpressVPN. Find out how you can get three months free of ExpressVPN by clicking the link in the description. That's expressvpn.com slash Drew. Now back to whoever that other guy is. Thank you so much, ExpressVPN, for watching today's video, and thank you for sponsoring it. I am very appreciative of the fact that you sat through an entire video about such a non-topical topic. The only thing I can guarantee on this channel is that whatever you think I'm gonna make a video about, I probably won't. I guess that makes me different? <laughs> I guess that makes me not like the other guys. You know, sometimes girls don't realize that the perfect guy is right in front of them the whole time. Be sure to tune in next week for a video where I do the reverse of Holly's Holiday, which is to say that I will get broken up with and then turn into a mannequin. So.